Okay, so um, let's see if we can get started. Um, so for this, I actually thought it might be uh, nice to, instead of go over some of the easier things from the beginning of the chapter, uh, to actually go over uh, some uh, slightly more difficult items. So um, I thought it would be nice to make a video on Romberg integration. Um, and so I'll show you Romberg integration two ways. Uh, one way is using matrices and an iterative method. Um, and then the other way is going to be to write um, a recursively defined function. Uh, sometimes recursive functions are frightening to students, but uh, I don't think, uh, actually, in my opinion, the recursive uh, definition is a little bit easier than actually writing out, um, than, than writing out the, the, the function itself, uh, the, well, the iterative function. Uh, just for me thinking through the problem. So what do I want to do? Well, um, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, figure out the order of extrapolation that I actually want. Uh, if you remember um, what, when we were doing um, when we were doing Romberg integration, uh, basically what we did is we did uh, Richardson extrapolation. Um, we just extended that out from the second order to third, fourth, fifth, or however many orders we want. So uh, I'm actually going to set the order of extrapolation uh, to be five. Now um, here, the, the well, uh, I'll, I'll show you why some things are good and bad about this method. Um, so here, if I do a, a fifth order, really what I can do is get the fifth order, but the first term in the fifth order extrapolation. So um, let's let's see how this works. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm I'm, I'm going to I'm going to call something uh, ROM for short, uh, and that's just going to be um, it's going to be a matrix of zeros um, that's five by five. So um, so that I have that made. Now um, if you remember, what we need to do is for the very first column. Um, if you kind of remember what the tables were looking like when we set them up in class, the very first column was just the trapezoid rule, right? We use the trapezoid rule to get approximations for the integral. Um, in this case, we'll, we'll go out to, to five, right? So we're going to go from uh, what we're doing here is actually two to the fifth, um, right? So we'll go, um, um, or I guess two to the fourth is, 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 what's going to, is what it's going to go up to. So here, um, well, it's going to be two to the four um, segments on, on the trapezoid. Uh, so here, let's see. Um, I'm going to just write a for loop. Uh, I'll just do simple for i in range order. Right. What I'm going to do here is the um, uh, row i. Um, and here, this is going to be, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, row i column zero. Uh, that's just going to be equal to, well, um, up here, I just, uh, I wrote all this stuff up here in advance, right? So this is just an imported, uh, I've, I've defined a trapezoid rule function. Um, hopefully, you're able to do this in one of the early uh, exercises. Um, and then here, this is just a, um, this is just the function itself. You, know, you need this for the this and then so what I want to do is I'm just going to make this to be a trapezoid and um, let's say uh, I want to go from 0 to 5 in this case because um, that's what I said the, the bounds of my integral were and then the n is just going to be in this case it's going to be 2 to the power um, I, I'm sorry 2 to the power I so, right, it's going to start at 0, and then it's go 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I'm going to get up to uh, 2 to the 4 segments in this case. Right. So um, here we go. Right, and then that should be, that should be done. Right, so now, um, now that's, kind of, that's kind of taken care of. Right, so here I get... Mm-hmm. 
this is order by order. Um, so what's the next thing I want to do? Well, um, the next thing I want to do is finish filling in. Now, if we want, we could just um, actually print what we have so far and take a look at it. So if I print this matrix, um, hopefully it, it, it prints out something. Nope, it is not done. Trapezoid is not done. called it tapezoid. Well, that'll do it. So hopefully this works better. Now, right, you notice that what we would have here, this is a, this would be um, an approximation of the integral if I had, um, if I'm just using one trapezoid, right? Here's an approximation using two, there's four, there's eight, right? And here's 16 trapezoids. Um, and we'll see, right? What we want to do, we're going to fill in the next columns, right? But um, remember that the, the, the next column here, instead of having um, five entries, it's only going to have four entries. So what I'll do is I'm basically going to stair step down and eventually get um, and eventually get over here, right? This, this last thing, that's going to be the fifth order, basically first, the first entry in the fifth order um, column. Is going to go right down here um, and so that's the one I'm after uh, so now I have to figure out how to do that um, if you remember back um, to when we when we did uh, when we were doing interpolation um, using Newton Newton's method uh, we did something very similar um, so what I have to do now is I have to think of I'm kind of fixing the column right and then I'm stepping down the row and um, and and, and and, and how, how am I going to do that? So uh, I'm gonna, for me, I'm gonna set up an, uh, I'm gonna set up a nested loop. Um, I'll just use I again. Um, so here I'm gonna use A range. So that's gonna be one order. Um, say this is going to be so <clears throat> what I could imagine is that I is going to be my column number and then J is going to be my um, J is going to be my row number so um, I'm basically fixing the column um, at the beginning of the loop and then I'm going down the row so what I want here is actually I want to run from I to right So now what do I do? Well, if I imagine what I want is say in this one one entry is actually the uh, the thing from right. So let's say I'm in column, and remember that J is the row, right? I is the column. Well, that's just going to be equal to what I want to do is take the entry from in this case, it's going to be row j, column, i minus 1, right? And I'm going to add that to, well, to that, I'm going to add this difference of um, the, um, the row j and the row j minus 1 entry divided by, um, in this case, it's going to be 4 to the power of the column that I'm in. Right, so it's going to be four to the. This is um, you know, remember this is column zero, this is column one. So here I'm going to go um, four to the power uh, one and then minus one. So let's see how that works out. So what I want to do is I want to take this is uh, row j, right? Remember uh, row j, I'm uh, I minus one, right? And then minus the Romberg entry in j minus 1, comma, uh, this is i minus 1, right? And then then I want to divide by 4 to the power of, it's going to be um, the column I'm in, so this is column i, right? And then I'm going to subtract 1 from the resulting value. And now, right, I should pretty much have it done. So now if I want, I can print this matrix. Hopefully I've done it correctly. 
and we'll see. If not, you know, I'll have to figure out what I've done and go back and fix it. All right, so that looks pretty good. So notice, right, we're getting better and better approximations as we go along. Okay. Now, what are some potential issues um, with this way of doing it? Well, let's say I wanted the third, right, or the second. I want the second, uh, the, the second best approximation from the fifth order extrapolation. So what I would need is another row on here. So what I have to do is extend this out further and further, like each time I do it. Um, so uh, let's let's see if, if, if we can do this um, in, a, in a slightly better way. Um, and, and by that, I mean what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a recursive function. Um, and, and let's see how that let's see how the, the recursive function works. And we'll compare we'll compare the, the two. Okay. So I'm going to go back up to the top. Um, and then at the very end, we'll see how it compares to the, the actual value of the function overall. Uh, I'm going to call I'm going to say def. This is going to be. I'm going to just call this Romberg. Now, what I'm actually going to need to pass in is a k, a j, um, and I also need to pass in a and b. Um, I believe that's all I need to pass into the function. Yeah. So. <clears throat> What I, whenever you're writing a, a function that's defined recursively, you always need to figure out what happens in the base case. So that's sort of like when you're when you're at a one or a zero or something like that. So if you if you remember the way it worked was um, for us uh, when when we're at when we're at one, right? We're basically doing the trapezoid rule, right? So in this case, when k is one, we basically just want to do the trapezoid rule for um, A and B, um, and, and and then <clears throat> what we want for the number of, um, what we want for the number is uh, going to be 2 to the, in this case, it's going to have to be the, the, the J, J minus 1. So just like just like this function right here. Yeah. So when uh, at the base, right, I'm going to say if k equal 1, what I want to do is return. Now, I'm going to call trapezoid once again. That's going to be trapezoid. So a, that's just going to be the a I'm passing in. And notice I'm going to have to pass in the a and the b every time. But that's just because at the end, what I want is to um, is to actually get to the um, I, at, at the very end, right? When it gets down to when when k gets down to one, I'm going to actually have to tell it to do the trapezoid. Uh, I'm going to have to compute that trapezoid rule um, um, for the interval a to b. So I'll have to do that every time. So that's the the base, right? Um, otherwise, right, I want to just, I want to basically follow something very similar to what I have here. Only the way that it's written out is actually not going to be the way I want to write it. I'm actually going to do some rearranging. Uh, I'm going to get, I'm going to get it to look a little bit nicer. Um, so <clears throat> because if I do it, if I basically just took what I had here, I would be calling the function once here, twice here, and each time I'm calling the function, it's it's you know taking up more memory. So there's a little bit nicer way I can actually write it out. Um, so in this case, what I could write is um, it's going to be four to the power. This is going to be k minus one, right? That's going to be times. And whenever I do recursive stuff, all I want to do is call Romberg once again. I'm going to call Romberg. It's going to be k. Um, it's going to be k, then j, plus 1, right? And then uh, minus 
Uh, this is going to be Romberg um, K, comma J. Let me make sure I'm right on that. Oh, it's K minus one. I'm sorry. It's K minus one. The K has to go down every time. K minus one here, and then K minus one here. And then, um, what am I going to do here? Well, I'm still going to divide by, um, this is 4 to the k minus 1. This is uh, 4 to the power of k minus 1. And then that's just minus 1. And I think that's it. I think we have it. So this was the original function that I wrote over here. Oh, and I have to pass in a and b every single time as well. That is a mistake, so I need to check my work. So every time I need to also pass in a and b, because notice that those are actually things I need to, uh, I need to put in the, in the function. So here, this is going to be a, a comma b. Okay, now, hopefully this works out. If not, then I'll go back and, and actually uh, have to do some editing. But I should be able to just call, right? I should be able to just call Romberg with the specifications. So I would put like 5, 1, and then 0, 5 in down here. And I should, um, like when it actually returns, um, what it should return is, um, is, is this value that I have right here. So let's see. I could print um, the Romberg thing here. And let's say I want to print, this is just Romberg, right, 5, 1, 0, 5. And let's see if those match up. If not, I've done something wrong and i got to go back to the drawing board. Syntax error, of course. Um, probably messed up somewhere over here. error. Okay. Let's try running it again. So notice um, here I get 147.413 something, right? Notice that it matches up exactly with this right here. And if I wanted to actually check, I could print um, 5, right, minus 1. And let's see if this actually gives us a, a number that's pretty close to the actual answer. Right. Well, notice that our actual answer is pretty close here. So one kind of nice advantage about writing the recursive function like this is that if I wanted a, if I wanted a, a fifth order extrapolation and I want to say like have this third value in the fifth order column, well, I could just put a five and a three there and then notice I get that. Whereas if I want it here, I'd actually have to go to, um, uh, a seventh order extrapolation. Um, so I have to have a seven by seven to actually get this number right here, right? And uh, so this is really handy because I can just put like a single thing in, right? Without changing too much. Um, and notice that I'm getting better and better approximations each time I'm doing this. So um, that's it.